thank you, Lord. If you want to be finding your place this morning while Sister Gwen is receiving the offering, be turning your Bibles to the book of Psalms, chapter 51. And uh, while you're turning there, I will share a little bit with you. As we took our cruise with the Gators in 2017, I guess they do it on everyone. I guess it's a standard thing. But they gave uh, an opportunity for you to meet all of the Gator vocal band, and they were signing, they were giving their autographs. And uh, Irene and I used our Bibles for them to sign. And uh, Reggie said that made him a little nervous, but he did anyway. <laughs> but Gloria, when she autographed my Bible, what she wrote was Psalms 139. And this is the last two verses of that chapter. Search me, O oh God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts. And see if there be any wicked way in me. And lead me in the way everlasting. The psalmist, he not only knew how to write songs, but he had learned how to pray. Amen. Psalms 19 and 14. He said, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in my sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. It is good to know how to pray. That's right. Amen. If you have your place in Psalms 51, give me a big... Can I take my time this morning, yes. first of all? Yes, If you have your place in Psalms 51, give me a big healthy hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want to read the entire chapter. Have mercy upon me, O God, according to thy loving kindness. Now, I don't know if your Bible does or not, but most of the ones that I've had says to the chief musician of Psalm of David, when Nathan the prophet came unto him after he had gone into Bathsheba. In other words, when David had sinned, this is his writing afterward. Have mercy upon me, O God, according to thy loving kindness, according unto the multitude of thy tender mercies, blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity, and cleanse me from my sin. For I acknowledge my transgressions and my sin is ever before me. Against thee, thee only, have I sinned and done this evil in thy sight, that thou mightest be justified when thou speakest and be clear when thou judgest. Behold, I was shaped in iniquity and in sin did my mother conceive me. Behold, thou desirest truth in the inward parts, and in the hidden part thou shalt make me to know wisdom. Purge me with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Make me to hear joy and gladness, that the bones which thou hast broken may rejoice. Hide thy face from my sin, and blot out all my iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from thy presence, and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation, and uphold me with thy free spirit. Then will I teach transgressors thy ways, and sinners shall be converted unto thee. Deliver me from my blood guiltiness, O God, thou God of my salvation. And my tongue shall sing aloud of thy righteousness. O Lord, open my, thou my lips, and my mouth shall show forth thy praise. 
For thou desirest not sacrifice, else I would give it. Thou delightest not in burnt offerings. The sacrifice of God are a broken spirit, a broken and a contrite heart, O God, thou wilt not despise. Do good in thy good pleasure unto Zion. Build thou the walls of Jerusalem. Then shalt thou be pleased with the sacrifices of righteousness, with burnt offering and whole burnt offering. Then shall they offer bullocks upon thine altar. I wanted to, the words that the Lord spoke to me that caused me to search out that scripture as I was, uh, you guys were working the yard sale and I was seeking the Lord for something more this morning. And the verse that, the words that stuck out to me was inward parts. You find it in verse 6. Behold, thou desirest truth in the inward parts, and in the hidden part thou shalt make me to know wisdom. You know, there is an old saying. Some of you may have heard it. Beauty is only skin deep. But ugly runs all the way to the ball. <laughs> you can put up a good front, brother. Yeah. But I'm ugly to the ball, right? <laughs> now you look good to me. I do. Oh. You look good to me. There's a part in here that I can't see. That's right. And I believe it's good yeah. from what I see from him. Yes. But there's an all seeing eye yes. that knows you yes. even better than you know yourself. That's right. Amen. Yeah. Why would you say that, Pastor? I think I know myself pretty good. Jeremiah said the heart is desperately wicked and deceitful above all things. Who can know it? That's right. That's why the psalmist said in 139, Search me, O God. Has it been long ago that in my prayer time I was saying, Lord, I am not qualified to search my own heart. You know why? Because I can be prejudiced. That's right. You know, I can kind of like myself if I'm not careful. I can tell myself I'm doing good. But when I allow him to search me, he sees the inward part. He knows things about me that he reveals to me that I haven't seen yet. Mm -hmm. Is he doing that to find fault? No. He is doing that he, that he might bring me to the likeness of his character. That's right. That he might perfect righteousness in me. Yes. It pleases him. Now, you know, I, I don't know. People would say in front of us when we were together, you look so much like your dad. Now, I don't really know if that pleased dad or not. He never did much comment about that. But I can tell you that it pleases my Heavenly Father. Amen. It pleases my Heavenly Father if he can look at me and begin to see himself. If he can search the inner part of me and know that my heart is knit with his heart. If he can find me loving in the same way that he loves. Right. If he can find me being full of mercy that comes from him, by the way. And I strive to be merciful. 
You know, you've heard people say, I just want judgment. Well, you can have it. I don't want it. Mm. You can have all the judgment. I don't want it. Give me mercy. Oh, yes. Yeah. And he said, blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. So I, tried to sh I strive to show mercy because I need his mercy. I'm glad it's new every morning. I guess some days I kind of wear it out. So I'm glad it's new every morning. I'm glad it's multiplied day by day. How do you get that, Pastor? Because the scripture said it is new every morning. Right. That's what Jeremiah said. And then the psalmist said it endureth forever. Amen. So if it was new yesterday morning and there's new mercy this morning, that means there's a new batch. That's right. I need that. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Yes, in Jesus. I'm here to tell you that the flesh man is weak. And we need the mercy of God. We need the mercy of God. You know, Ozzy just sat down in a good place to be used for an example. <laughs> I don't think he was expecting that. Well, one of my favorite scriptures, and of course, the rest of them are all in this book. <laughs> and uh, we mentioned it in Bible study the other night. Psalms 4 and 12. For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, pushing and piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. I've used that scripture over and over and over and how much it meant to me and how it enlightened me and helped me to understand how it works about the judgment of God and how that the spirit goes back to God and, and our soul is carried by that spirit when we are engulfed in the word of God and so knit with him. But then verse 13 might say something that you need to hear this morning. Neither is there any creature that is not manifest in his sight. But all things are naked and opened unto the eyes of him with whom we have to do. That's right, amen. You're not fooling God. You're not hiding from God. You may be deceiving yourself. Mm -hmm. right. If you're telling yourself this morning, I'm really a good person, and you're holding bitterness in your heart, unforgiveness in your heart, you are not a good person in the eyes of God. That's right. Wow, preacher, that's strong. I want you to know the truth because the truth is what's going to set you free. Amen. As long as you hold that unforgiveness in your heart, it will fester like a sore and turn into bitterness. Amen. Yes. That bitterness eats at you where you can't hardly stand yourself and then you wonder why other people don't like you. I'm a good person. I don't everybody like me. You're deceiving yourself. Bitterness is worse than cancer. See, I'm talking from an experience. I know what I'm talking about.
Bless him, Lord. I spent a few years in, in bitterness. And I can tell you now, this morning, I've never had cancer, but I believe that I would rather have cancer in every part of my body as to have my heart full of bitterness. Because that bitterness will not only destroy your body, but it works on your body as well. Mm -hmm. But it will destroy your soul. Amen. Amen. See, what bitterness does, it keeps you wallowing in self-pity and blaming everybody else. Come on. That's right. Somebody help me preach this morning. Bless him, Jesus. Because you need to remember this. This is a Holy Ghost note you need to remember. Look at your neighbor and say, bitterness will keep you wallowing in self-pity. Self and blaming everybody else to justify yourself. Yes. Right. Amen. Mm -mm -mm. Somebody needs deliverance. Bless him, Jesus. Somebody needs to turn loose yes. Amen. of that thing they've been holding in their heart. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yeah. You need to turn loose this morning and let go. You see that person that you're holding bitterness toward, it's not binding them. That's right. It's binding you. You're the one imprisoned yeah. by the unforgiveness. Amen. Turn it loose. Amen. Amen. You know what sometimes we do? We get so into that bitterness that when we can't find enough people to blame for how we feel, we start blaming God. Why? Why? See, the words that God spoke to me that day that he awoken me from my bitterness, he brought me to a moment of truth and he said, you're not paying for anybody's sin but your own. Mm -hmm. If you'd have been where I wanted you to be, you wouldn't be in this mess. Bless him, Lord. He had a better place for me. I just wasn't in it. I just wasn't following him. Bless Are you listening to me? Amen. James said, Let not a man say when he is tempted, I am tempted of God. For God cannot be tempted of evil. That's right. Neither tempteth he any man. Amen. But every man is enticed, is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. Yeah, you can lie to yourself and say, well, I'm a pretty good person. I ain't hurting nobody. Yeah, you are. You're hurting yourself. That's right. God's got a better plan for you. Amen. You're hurting yourself when you're not turning loose, when you're not forgiving, when you're not saying, Goodbye, bitterness. I want to feel the joy of the Holy Ghost one Amen. more time. Bless him, Lord. Amen. The inward part. Yeah. Every one of you in here look really good to me this morning. The only way you could look any better is have your glorified body. I'm waiting on mine. Amen. And I know you'd be glad when I get it. <laughs> Hallelujah. You look good to me. But if you'll let God search your heart, it may be that you could look better to yourself when you look in the mirror. Right. When you turn loose of that thing that's been eating at you and eating at you and eating at you and taking days of your life that you could feel the joy of the Lord and be a powerful witness and causing you to be withdrawn within yourself, wallowing in that self-pity. Got to repeat it. 
Bitterness will keep you wallowing in your own self-pity. How far, far could that take you? I don't want to try to preach another message this morning. But I one time preached a message. Who was hanging out at your house? And I used Saul, the first king of Israel, when he disobeyed God. And he just kept going farther and farther and farther away from God. That's right. He became jealous of David. Jealousy began to grow into murder in his heart. He wanted to kill David. And then it began to grow so much because the Spirit of God had left him because he was determined to be disobedient. And the Spirit of God had left him and it became so great that in, he couldn't hear from God anymore so he calls up a witch so he can hear from the devil. Right. And I know that the words he heard was from Samuel who had already passed, which was a forbidden thing to do. And even Samuel didn't give him the advice he wanted, but rebuked him beyond the grave. Bitterness will take you so far. You know how far it took Saul? Because he was being defeated on every hand. He no more had the hand of God upon his life right. until he fell upon his own sword and took his own life. Did you know that bitterness will bring you to such depression as to be suicidal? Yes. Get rid of it. Get rid of it. Get rid of it now. Amen. Get rid of it now. Don't let it carry you so far. That's right. Get rid of it now. Let God search the inward part. Amen. Let him speak to your heart. Amen. And when he does, say, God, I want to be delivered. Amen. It'll work. Again, I'm talking by experience. When I heard God speaking, I didn't say anything out loud. I didn't have to. God was here in my heart. <coughs> And in my heart, I made a vow and said, God, I'm sorry. And no matter what anybody else does, I'm going to try to do the right thing. And I've tried to do that, but I've failed. But he knows my heart that I really want to and that I try. And he knows my weakness, and so he forgives me. You see, you've got to turn loose of all of that and accept the forgiveness of God. Amen. Now, there's a key here that I've got to share with you. I just feel like the Holy Ghost is speaking to me. You've got to forgive your brother or your sister before you can get forgiveness from God. That's right. God's got it for you, but you've got to turn loose of something. You've got to turn loose of that to grab a hold of God. You can't hold on to that and still get a hold of God. Amen. You've got to turn loose of that. God is searching the inner part this morning. Some heart, somebody's heart, God is speaking to. Amen. He is searching the very depth of your inside this morning. And if you'll let him speak to you, he has something glorious for you. And I have more scripture, but I'm not going to use them at this point in time. Come, honey. God is searching the inner part. Amen. And you can act like nothing's going on. And you might fool everybody in this room. But God's no fool. That's right. Amen. Be not deceived, God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. If he soweth to his flesh, he shall of the flesh reap corruption. But if he soweth to the spirit, he shall reap life everlasting. Amen. And let us not be weary in well-doing, for we shall reap in due season if we faint not. Therefore, let us do good unto all men, especially unto them of the household of faith. 
get truly in the family this morning. Let God begin to knit your heart. The key theme of this church has been for months, loving God, loving each other. Amen. God wants you in this family. We want you in this family. We want to love you, and we want to be loved. God wants to love you, and God wants you to love him. Right. Oh, my, what a joyous situation when love flows like a mighty river. Oh, yes. In the inward part. In the inward part. In the inward part. Stand with us. lightly this morning if you want to you have a choice but I believe I heard from God yesterday while you all were working so hard here I believe I heard from God yesterday